All these scanners are doing is saving time of measuring with micrometers or CMMs or other things like that. These things basically take a majority of the labor out of the equation for reverse engineering something. It's time is money, right? All right, guys, we got a cool scan today from a client that actually used this case study to buy an HX Red Bundle. We've got a injection mold for a boot. Very, very heavy. Oh God, this must, think this must be like 50 pounds. Basically, this is a reverse engineering application. The client needs this lip around the entire boot and nothing else. So none of this detail actually matters. The surface top doesn't matter. The entire thing doesn't matter. Just this lip. Starting out, we're gonna use the EinScan HX 3D scanner because of its blue laser capability. This not only gives us higher resolution than something like the Pro HD, but it also scans a lot faster and it deals with reflective and metallic surfaces really, really easily. So we don't have to spray anything or do anything to this. We just put some markers down and scan. There's a couple ways I could do markers on this part. Obviously, I've got it on the turntable, which already has some markers on it, which can be useful, but the part's a little bit too big. I need more markers in view. You could use these um, scanning marker pyramids that we make in SillaVisionMiter.com, and I could just put them on the part around it. But this part has some curves and they might slide around during the scanning. And frankly, it's small enough that I should be able to only use a few stickers, and I'm just gonna use the traditional sticker markers. Two to three inches apart, just so there's plenty in view. Let's move on to the actual scanning process. So here on the computer, I've got the software open and we're gonna choose laser scan mode. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a new project group called this boot mold. I'm gonna select my resolution. Now accuracy and resolution are different. Accuracy is always the same. On these machines is 0.04 millimeter accuracy. That means a point is where a point is. The resolution is how far apart those points are, which affects the number of points that you're actually gathering and how much surface detail you actually get. Could go half a millimeter, but this lip is only like three millimeters wide. So I'm actually gonna go to 0.2 millimeters and that should give me enough point cloud data over the entire surface that I can get rid of everything else and have exactly what I need. I'm ready to go. I'm just gonna pick up the scanner. I'm gonna stay in normal mode and I'm gonna turn on auto exposure, which is a new feature they added recently. They're constantly updating the software. It's pretty sweet. I'm just gonna hit the preview mode and now it's gonna do the auto exposure countdown. This is measuring the light in the room and now it's ready to go. So you can see my preview lines. I see my markers. I'm just gonna hit the button again and I'm gonna start scanning. Now, a cool little trick right in the beginning. I'm just going to pause it real quick. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to select part of this area down here with whatever tool is already selected and make a cutting plane. Fitting the point cloud, that'll give me this, which I can then move up to the point where I don't need to scan anything below that. So now I'm not going to be gathering anything on the table or anything like that. And it's actually going to just focus on the upper area. Now I just hit the button again, it goes back into the scan and I keep scanning. So I'm going to slowly turn the table and I'm always gonna watch lights up here or the bar on the screen. If I get too close, you can see that it turns red. If I get too far away, it turns blue. So I wanna keep it in that green and just keep moving around. Now you can brush and I can move like this, but just turning it like this, you can already see we're getting a boatload of detail. All right, probably enough for the client to get their job done. Because again, over here, we can see they only need this little lip. Now over here, I'm noticing I'm not getting the side walls, So I'm gonna go back and just focus a little bit more because I got these side walls. Now, if I want to, I can start scanning, click in here just to zoom the view in. And if I just switch this, I can do it on the fly. I'm gonna switch to reflective mode. And that should get the metallic reflections just that much better to speed up this process and get the job done. Because time is money, right? All these scanners are doing is saving time of measuring with micrometers or CMMs or other things like that, that would just take a lot of labor. And these things basically take a majority of the labor out of the equation for reverse engineering something. And that should be enough. Checking out the data, looks like I got all that critical mass. Now for the client, there's a lot of stuff I can get rid of in here. If I just go, I'm gonna optimize the point clouds, but 
I'm gonna get rid of some of this extra data before I do that. I can use the polygonal lasso tool, hold shift, click, click, click. Just gonna click around all this. Selected, delete selected data. I'm gonna start selecting over here. Now I could have just selected the boot and then inverted the selection. That probably would have been a faster way to do it. Hey, look, it's the bottom of a shoe. This is pretty cool. Injection molds are really cool. It's a whole thing we do to on the other side of the, the 3D printing. If you haven't seen our 3D printing videos, high temp, really strong materials, but it's all really the biggest ROIs are in manufacturing support. So the jig or something that held this to machine it or whatever, you get the idea. There's a lot of stuff in manufacturing. So this is looking pretty good. That's all the data I need. I'm gonna keep the rest of that stuff in there just for reference. I'm gonna apply the edit and then it's gonna process the point cloud. That, that got rid of a bunch of extra stuff. As you can see, these little floating hanger parts and everything are still gonna go away after I generate the point clouds. So now it's generating the point cloud and really optimizing all the data that it got and all the different little points. And maybe there's some points that are too close to each other or something like that. It's removing those. For reference, we're using i7-9700, 3.6 gigahertz. We got 64 gigs of RAM and an RTX 2070 from NVIDIA. This is like a four-year-old desktop gaming computer. So it's not super crazy intensive. If you're already doing CAD stuff for reverse engineering, chances are your computer's already good enough. So we zoom in here after it's generated those point clouds and you can see it's cleaned it up a lot. All this stuff in here, there's no little hangers and things done and done. If I want, I can just save this out and I'm gonna save the whole scan as an ASC, whole scan, just put it in there. And then I'm gonna go into the next step, which is meshing it. Now, maybe you wanted to scan an actual boot, turn it into an SDL and 3D print it. You can do that in here too. I'm just gonna go to mesh model and that gives me different, different options. I can go unwatertight or watertight. Watertight is just gonna fill in all the little gaps and holes and make it a solid body mesh. Whereas unwater tight's what you want for reverse engineering because it's not gonna add any data. Filter, that basically gets rid of little artifacts and it smooths stuff out a little bit. Reverse engineering, you're not gonna do any of that. Remove small floating bits. We could do that, we could leave it on one, but frankly, if you're doing reverse engineering, you probably got the red bundle or a higher tier software of Geomagic. Basically all the stuff you need for scanning, managing that point cloud, cleaning up the data and importing it into a CAD program. I'm gonna go fill small holes. Nope, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna remove spikes and we're not gonna fill the marker holes. And maximum triangles, 20 million. We should be, that should be more than enough. Hit apply and then it's gonna do all those calculations and turn this point cloud into a bunch of triangles that you can then read in a 3D program. There it is. So we've got this now, I can confirm and then we can go into here and I can just save it out as a, again, the ASC or an STL, OBJ, PLY, 3MF, you name it. There's a couple more things that we haven't really shown off in previous videos, and that's going to be these tools. Obviously, you all know about simplification. If I know it's 108 meg STL and I want it to be five, I can do that, and then it'll turn it into a low poly right there real easy. You can also optimize the mesh and have it basically even out the triangles and the shapes so they're more consistent throughout. You can do actual smoothing to make things smoother, derp, auto hole filling, manual hole filling, for example. I'll show you that, highlights all the holes and you can just go and click it and it's gonna fill in that hole with a curvature tangent or flat as usual. You can flip all the normals, basically make it inside out and you can add a cutting plane and you can also mirror it. But next, the thing we rarely show is the measurement tab because you actually can measure stuff directly in the scanning program. So on the right side, you can see there's a bunch of features, a bunch of new tools. And the one we're gonna look at is the actual measurement tools. And I can see that from here to there is approximately 19.612 millimeters. Unfortunately, no, there's no way to do inches right now. Not yet, there are updates always coming out. It's a quick conversion. You can also do surface area modeling. Select that area and we can see 3,100 millimeters squared. If it were watertight, we could actually find the volume of the 3D model. So those are some really quick tools that you can use in the software that makes it really easy to do some quick measurements. Of course, you'll probably wanna go out into Geomagic or a similar CAD program and actually get your measurements, but it's there if you need it. All right, guys, so if you have any questions or wanna know more about the different 3D scanners that we have available, or you aren't sure if it'll work with your application, you can do what this client did and actually send us your part, and then we'll get on a live video stream with you and just scan it and go through it. So we'll find out the challenges you might find after you buy your scanner, before you even buy your scanner. It's our job to make sure you're getting the right piece of equipment before we sell it to you. So with that in mind, 
reach out, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're always here to help. Thank you so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.